Today we're going to be looking at a simple static equilibrium problem. What it means to be in static equilibrium is that the object is not moving translationally and it's also not moving rotationally. So what this means for us and the way we're going to go about trying to solve this problem is with a couple of simple statements. The first being that sigma f in the x direction is zero and the second being that sigma f in the y direction is equal to zero. And we know this is true for um, any object that isn't moving or an object that's moving with constant velocity. But today we're also going to be adding an equation to, to this static equilibrium problem and that is that sigma tau is equal to zero, meaning that the sum of the torques on this object is equal to zero. And this is true for any object that is also not rotating or rotating with constant angular velocity for that matter. So what we're going to start by doing um, is looking at this problem. It's somewhat of a balance beam problem. It says in the drawing below, the mass of the board is 25 kilograms and is uniformly distributed. Calculate the unknown force F1, that's this force here, needed to balance the system. We're going to start this problem by drawing a free body diagram. One of the things that it says in the problem is that the mass of the board is uniformly distributed, which means that when we consider our field force of gravity on this board, we can think of gravity acting from the geometric center of the board. So I'm going to draw that in. That's FG. Also, we have a known or an unknown force that we're trying to find. That's F1. And we also have a force F2 acting on this. This is F2. And it says in the problem this is 500 newtons. Okay. Are these all of the forces on the board? If you think about it, all of these forces are kind of pointing down. And if this was the end of the story, if these were all of the forces on the board, then we would probably end up with at least a downward acceleration. So there must be another force, something else that's touching the board. Well, that thing that's touching the board is the fulcrum, which supports the board itself. This provides a force upward to counteract all the downward forces. That's Fn. And it must also have a component of force that cancels out this F2. So there's got to be some other, it's probably longer, but um, so this is Fn in the y direction, let's say, and this is Fn in the x direction. There's got to be a horizontal force. Now in this problem, we're going to pick our sign convention, and we usually pick up and to the right as positive, and we can do that, but we're additionally going to add that um, we have a direction out of the board is also positive. Generally, our sign convention will follow a right-hand rule where the x direction cross the y direction is equal to the z direction. So this is an example where the positive x cross the positive y is going to be equal to the positive z. That sort of means that any counterclockwise torques are going to be positive and any clockwise torques will be negative when we start to calculate the torque. Okay, now that we have our free body diagram drawn, we can start to calculate how to get this F1. So in order to get this F1 value, we're going to look, we're going to start by looking at the sigma tau statements. Whenever you start to look at sigma tau, you have to pick a fulcrum for the problem. 
A smart choice for the choice of fulcrum is where we have some unknown forces, and that's at this fulcrum here. We don't know what FNY is, and we don't know what FNX is. Really, the choice of fulcrum is your choice completely. You could pick a fulcrum here at F1. You could pick a fulcrum here at FG. You could pick a fulcrum here at F2. You could even pick a fulcrum here in the middle where there is no force. But the thing about picking the fulcrum at this location is that FNY and FNX, neither of them produce a torque if we pick our fulcrum to be at this location. This is because the lever arm or the distance to where the force is applied here is equal to zero. It just helps us with math to pick a really smart fulcrum. So we're going to look at the positive torques first. We're going to write sigma torque is equal to zero. That's like saying sigma F equals MA, but now we're talking about rotation. And now we're going to sum up the torques. If we look at this beam, the first torque that we're going to account for is the positive torque. The first torque then is R1, which this value is going to be 4 meters because FN1 is applied 4 meters from the fulcrum times F1. If you remember, um, our general formula for torque is R cross F. So we're going to look at just the uh, perpendicular component. We're going to do the component method here. So it's R1 F1 since the entire F1 is contributing to the torque. It's perpendicular to the R vector. So that's our first positive torque. Then we have two negative torques provided by FG and F2. So I'm going to say this is RG. That's the distance from the fulcrum to FG. That's going to be 2 meters since we know that the board is 12 meters long, and FG has to be the cent at the center at 6 meters. Our fulcrum is at 4 meters. So RG is going to be 2 meters times FG, which is 25 kilograms times 9.8. From that, we're also going to see that this F2 produces a negative torque. And if we use the component method, we can break this F2 into F2y and F2x. So then we look at this as the angle theta that's given in the problem. And we're going to write R2 F2y. And this is all equal to 0. What we're trying to find is this value, F1. And all the other values are known. So we can rearrange this to say that F1 is equal to RG times FG plus R2 F2Y over R1. I can plug in values for that. That's RG is 2 meters. FG is 25 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared plus we're going to have a little bit of space problem here, plus R2, R2 is 8 meters, times F2Y will be F2, which is 500 newtons, times 
Um, let's see. Well, it's the sine of theta. And then we're going to take all of this and divide it by r1, which is this distance, which is equal to 4 meters. If you'll notice from this, we're going to get newtons as the unit, so that's a good thing. When you plug in all these numbers into your calculator, you get 600... 22 and a half newtons. So that's going to be equal to F1. Okay. For the second part of the problem, we have to look at what is this component FNY. In order to find FNY, we're actually going to use this sigma f in the y direction equals zero. So what we'll come up with is sigma f y is equal to zero. There's no acceleration in the vertical direction. So our positive force is going to be fn y And our negative forces, we have F1, Fg, and F2y. So this is F1, Fg, and F2y. So we get that Fny is equal to F1 plus Fg plus F. To y. We can plug in numbers there, and F1 we just found is 622.5 newtons plus 25 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared plus F2y is 500 newtons times sine of 30 degrees. When we plug this in, we get 1117.5 newtons. Or when we round that off, we'll get 1120 newtons. Okay, hopefully you understand now how to do a simple static equilibrium problem. Again, the important points for any static equilibrium problem is that we're going to look at sigma f in the x direction is equal to zero, sigma f in the y direction is equal to zero, and sigma tau is equal to zero. So all those things are true when we have no translation and no rotation. If you have any questions about this, please ask in class.